Welcome back everyone and thank you for your amazing support in watching and liking Luxury Now videos. Keep supporting and smash that subscribe button to know more top expensive and luxury items today. If you want to know more about luxury and lifestyle I've got you. And be sure to check out my previous videos. Today, we have an interesting topic to discuss. Old money versus new money. In the world of wealth and status, there are different perceptions and dynamics associated with these two categories. In this video, we will explore the differences between old money and new money, and shed light on the unique characteristics and challenges each presents. So, let's dive right in. Wealth Source The most glaring difference between old and new money is the source of the wealth. People with old money receive their fortunes from at least one generation prior. Old money is inherited wealth and often comes from family businesses or investments. Some examples of old money wealth sources would be the Walton family Walmart, the Rockefeller family in oil and gas, and the Hilton family hotel magnates. New money, as we mentioned above, is money that was directly earned. Most of the publicly wealthy people we see today are new money. Think about a famous celebrity or professional athlete. One of the most notable being Bill Gates. These people are perfect examples of someone who is new money perception, an individual's wealth is viewed differently depending on whether it is new or old money. Many old money families are well-educated and don't publicly flaunt their wealth. They live in areas known to cater to the rich, such as the Hamptons or Upper Manhattan. You may have heard someone mention the old money aesthetic before. Usually, this refers to a classic and refined look. This generalization clashes with the new money aesthetic of wearing branded clothing or large noticeable jewelry. Habits. Old money versus new money habits differ just as much as the aesthetic. New money habits involve people spending their money more carelessly. Someone who is new money may participate in spontaneous spending sprees. New money may also take more vacations and splurge on first-class tickets. Old money habits usually involve scheduled and well-thought-out activities. People with generational wealth are less likely to spend spontaneously. An old money family places practicality above convenience. People with old money spend their time attending attending high-class social events and participating in less accessible activities like polo or sailing. Leisure and hobbies. Another distinguishing factor between old and new money is how someone spends their leisure time. Old money tends to plan leisure meticulously. You can find people with old money attending dinners and hosting events on the regular. Hobbies of old money are things that are far too expensive for the average person. Old money loves the prestige of hobbies like dressage or boating. The expense of these hobbies keeps them out of reach for the middle class. A high cost of entry ensures that these hobbies remain only for the most wealthy in society. New money families are laxer in their leisure time and hobbies. New money may find themselves diving into interests they previously held, but on a whole new level. For example, new money might decide to start buying cars or expensive gadgets. Spending and saving. Spending and saving patterns of old and new money mindsets are miles apart. New money is known for spending lavishly and spending often. People with new money may say things like, spend it while you can. The rags to riches story often associated with new money makes people want to show off what they have earned. New money is also not as financially literate as old money. Saving or investing might happen, but it is on a much smaller scale. While new money people fund their 401ks, old money opens multiple brokerage accounts. Old money families tend to be much more frugal-minded. This means it comes from a more communal sense of who the money belongs. Old money is family money. It is meant to span generations, therefore, it cannot be spent willy-nilly. The financial education in old money families begins when they are young. A person inheriting old money will have the knowledge and resources to protect and grow their wealth. Investment style. The investment style of old and new money varies widely. Old money investments are generally safe and long term. However, it's more common for old money to have a broad investment portfolio that includes a mixture of stocks, bonds, and real estate. New money investments are often more speculative and risky. Because new money is new to investing, there's a learning curve to overcome. People with new money may not know as much about investing. This lack of a financial foundation often limits them to investing less broadly. Philanthropy. Philanthropy is a huge part of both old and new wealth. Old money is heavily involved in philanthropy. Most old money families have foundations that employ workforces to run their charity. For example, consider the long-standing Carnegie Foundation or the MacArthur Foundation. In total, old money families give hundreds of millions to good causes every year. New money isn't shy about donating either. People with new money have more targeted giving habits. New money loves to donate to local causes. You'll find that celebrities and athletes will open community centers or scholarship programs in their hometowns, 
Trend and Tradition It should be no surprise that new money follows trends, while old money follows traditions. In old money families, it's common to see children grow up to take over roles in family businesses and foundations. Old money also places heavy importance on alma maters. Some old money families have generations that all attend the same prestigious university. New money is more susceptible to new and trending things. For example, you can probably think of at least three celebrities with health and wellness companies. That's because health and wellness are trendy. The new money will follow recent trends in an attempt to capitalize and grow their wealth. Values. The values of old and new money tie in closely with the source of their wealth. People from old money honor family values and traditions to the extreme. Someone that comes from old money may disregard their wants to fulfill their role within the family. New money has values that align more with who they are as individuals. Someone with new money will value their wants and instincts over those of a collective. New money tends to take more risks because they rely solely on how they feel about things. Maintaining and growing wealth. Unfortunately, it's much more common to see someone with new money mishandle their wealth. We've all heard the stories of famous people who go bankrupt after their careers fizzle out. Most of this is due to a lack of knowledge about their wealth. New money is quick to spend and less quick to invest. The trend following often leads to bad investment decisions. Old money comes with built-in maintenance and growth mechanisms. Because old money has been invested across generations, there's not much need to try new investment strategies. And like we mentioned before, Old money is much more frugal with their spending choices. Old money and new money isn't just about the source of your wealth. Instead, it's a set of habits and values that determine whether you'll be classified in either upper class group. For example, old money has a reputation for being quietly refined, while new money is the opposite. One thing we know for sure is that old money spending habits are a sure way to guarantee that your wealth lasts for generations. Here are some commonly asked questions about new money versus old money. Is there tension between people with old money versus new money? How many generations are considered old money? What are common ways new money achieve their wealth? Thanks for watching and if you've not subscribed, please do it now as I will be sharing more top luxury items and lifestyle. Be sure to check out my previous videos and stay tuned for more.